Hi, I'm Tyson with Ag Aviation Adventures, and we're discussing how the spray is turned on as well as turned off when I'm out there spraying a field. It's pretty simple. It's actually just this handle right here. It's appropriately named the spray handle. When I push down on it, this turns my spray on, and when I pull up on it, it turns my spray off. Now there's what's called a suck back valve that this handles actuating and that's underneath the airplane. We're gonna go down there in a second and take a look at that valve and explain that. But that's really what is turning everything on and off. For me, I usually just judge it with the front of the airplane with the nose. When the nose gets to about the edge of the field, I'll turn on and I'm going 150. So when the nose hits the edge of the field and I take a half second to push this down, that puts me right on the edge of the field. When I go to turn the spray off, when the nose hits the end of the field and I pull up on this, again, that half second, that puts me right at the edge of the field to turn it off. There are some very advanced aircraft out there, not this one, that have automatic shutoff and automatic turning on of the spray pattern. I've used this before in dry applications to fertilize timber. And the scenario there is that you're out fertilizing trees and you're literally looking from the air at hundreds of acres of trees. And you would never be able to tell where one field starts and another field stops. Out here, it's pretty easy. Usually there are not a lot of fields that are back to back one crop. And so it's very easy to tell. Even if they are the same, there's usually a slight variation between the two. However, they do have this automatic on, automatic off for spray planes as well. I have buddies down in Texas that spray thousands of acres of CRP. And again, when you look out, it's CRP as far as the eye can see. And so it's very difficult to tell where you'd ever be turning on and turning off. With that, the shape file, again, same with the fertilizing timber, the shape file that you get, that's loaded onto the airplane. The airplane knows when you enter into that shape and when you exit that shape, and it does it for you. It either opens the gate if you're fertilizing dry or it turns your spray on and off. But let's go down underneath and I'll show you that suck back valve I mentioned. This is my suck back valve. So my spray handle is actually connected right here with this rod. And when I push down or pull up on the spray handle, it is actuating the valve inside of here. And it's called a suck back valve because it doesn't just turn the liquid off from going down this tube into my boom, but it actually diverts the liquid. So on the back side of the valve, it goes into this tube. And this is the one where the product is loaded on the side of the airplane when I'm on the ground. The liquid goes into here and then goes back into my hopper and then out of my hopper into the pump back down to this suck back valve. So what this does, when I pull the handle up and I'm not spraying, all of that liquid is diverted, goes back into my hopper and runs this continuous loop here. And that is keeping everything agitated. Sometimes if you're not agitating, things will start to separate. So once they go into the airplane, I have the pump running, everything's agitating and it stays nicely mixed. When I pull the handle up and I stop spraying, when this product starts to be diverted, it's putting a small amount of negative pressure on my booms so that I am not leaving anything dripping or drizzling or anything like that. That's pretty important, especially if you're near a town or pulling up over someone's house or really in any scenario, I don't want any nozzles dripping or anything like that. And by putting this slight negative pressure, by diverting everything, it helps so that you don't ever have a scenario like that. So that's how I'm physically turning the spray on and turning the spray off. It's all happening with the spray handle in the cockpit, which is attached to the suck back valve here. And that's how everything continues to get agitated in the hopper or goes down and out the booms. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching. I'm Tyson with Ag Aviation Adventures. Fly low and fly fast.